feeling today? Fine. I'm just really happy to be home. What you been doing? Writing for the smash record, I hope. Writing some rock and rolls, what we've been doing over and over, but we had a good week. It was hard. There may have been a meltdown. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> friends. That's okay. Uh, this will help. You know what I'm saying? You, it's still here. Nothing changes. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, today, the assignment for the day is to take from our 70 uh, plus demos that we've done now for this new album because we've been working and demoing now for a year and two months. And I'm going to take 70 plus songs and wean them down to about 19. And then I need to do uh, drum up mixes for them all because, well, Jen needs to learn her parts. We do drum up mixes uh, with BPMs, and that is my job for this day, which is easy. Why don't you explain to us what you're doing today? Uh, writing hits. Is that good enough? <laughs> But I like this, br that, that bridge dragged on for me and it made the song boring. Right. So now. Yeah. About to go do first day of rehearsals. Kill! It makes some hits, what we're doing. Duh, love got through the Amer It stops kind of early. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it needs to go. Duh, love got through the American noise. I would like that better. Yeah. You too. I agree. Okay, so you keep playing. Duh, the American What we didn't want to do is we didn't want to change what has finally become two, three. the skill of sound, whatever that may be. Um, we didn't want to go too far, but we wanted to try some new things and some of those, you know, new things. Maybe take the, the keyboard programming a little further than we did even on the last one. We wanted to keep the strings to some degree because we kind of become known for that. Um, and we've been known for the guy-girl vocal thing. And we thought, why not up that a little bit as well? But I think that in general, Corey and I wanted the record to be a little, um, what we call dirtier on the guitars, so maybe a little nastier. A little more, a little gritty, and maybe use some more kind of natural instruments on um, their programming to match that. And, and so I think because of that, the songs might be a tad bit heavier than the last one. But I think it's more it just has a feeling of, of rawness, maybe that the last one didn't have, have quite as much. We are my favorite band for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Like a hit, can't get enough of it. We're gonna go look at the studio, kind of get up the walk around, and we're gonna meet with Howard, uh, producer, and, and all the guys actually, engineers, and, and the full band, and uh, go over. Stuff. Pretty awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. What's up? How's it going? 
Yeah, let's get him on camera. Alright, that's it. This is awesome, huh? Well, it's yeah. amazing. Hello! Hello! How you doing? You're doing well filming. <laughs> there it is, the love thing. Oh. Then we'll go into the hits. You know, there's the chorus hits. I started writing the record. Um, I'm trying to think when I wrote my first song, uh, let's see, probably about three months after Awake came out, which was about what, three years ago. The official first one was Not Gonna Die. And um, that was the, the idea I had originally. Freak Show came pretty soon after that. We started doing demos about a year ago, right when this right, we started recording, right? A year and three to four months. Yeah. Yeah. So today's the actual, let's say, first day of recording drums. So I'm excited about the record. Day one. Lots of fun. Pet talks. Got very <laughs> That's the only pet talk you need. It's called high five. Awesome, Jen. Ugh, I'm nervous. I was thinking like both toms and kit, like dun, 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 dun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that sounds cool. Today is the start of recording. We've already had pre-production. We went through all the songs with Howard, our producer, um, who like produced that. Awake. Yeah, cool, yeah. Um, and the songs sound great. Today's the first day of drums, and it's always amazing to hear uh, the drums, you know, bit in the studio once you finally do it. Uh, Jen sounds awesome, and uh, the, the songs are. Uh, she she's uh, all nervous, but she's just killing it. We've already gotten through three songs in like five hours, four hours here, so. We are recording um, Fire and Fury at the minute. And to get the Tom sound in super epic, we have this cool system where they record it on tape, but faster with these awesome huge drums. And then they'll slow it down so it sounds even bigger when we put it on the record. This will be our first record that Seth has played uh, on, um, our guitarist, and um, he's just shredding, man. <laughs> he's really good. So I gave him a couple songs. Said, "Hey, this is your this is your chance to shine. Show me what you got." And he came back with some really great solos. I'm a kind of a child of the '80s. I grew up when guitar solos were a must for a rock band. You had to have one in just about every song. And uh, I was looking forward to hearing what Seth came up with, and it's absolutely awesome. So. I like your tone a lot. Yeah, it sounds really That's what we're looking for. That sounds right. Every one of these songs has that going on in it. What's that? It's just like pounding. pounding. <laughs> yes. Boom. That's been through a lot right there. Battle scars. Hey, man. If you want to kiss the sky, got to learn how to kneel. According to All right. you, you The uh, keyboard programming that my wife did is absolutely stunning. It's it's the best stuff I've heard out there. So uh, people that like that element of skillet, you know, that, that, whether it's a string orchestration, some of the live instruments like piano, or any, you know, some of the live strings for that matter, um, or the um, like the electronics, like in Hero, it has a little bit of that R and B feel on the, the loop. The, if you like that kind of thing. Then when you hear this, I think you're gonna go absolutely crazy because uh, the keyword program is very, very great. Yeah, I'm gonna go sing for the first time. Let's get this thing done so our fans can have some rock and roll. 
melody. Yeah. You'll do some singing. Oh, the good thing is this time is that all of the lyrics are riff. A lot of times you go and record a record and people are still finishing bars. I don't really like that lyric, but shut up. Uh, so this time we're gonna, it's, do, it's done. Destiny's got a hold on me. Guess I never knew love like love knows me cause I. Typically with rock music, uh, it's, all, it's about me, it's about the way I feel or the way you make me feel. It's very I driven, me driven. And this record has a very rallying thing. It's not just about me, it's about us. It's about uh, we can rise, we can change the world, we can make it a better place. All of us are hurting and let's all, you know, heal together. So there, there's kind of a cool element that I think the record is kind of encouraging to other people that they're not alone in maybe the guilt they feel. They're not alone in feeling alone. <laughs> uh, they're not the only ones that are going through all these hard issues that we all are going through them and together we can rise up and make a change. We're driving to the studio and we're going to hear our songs for the first time. 10 of the 15. And uh, am I nervous? A little bit. Am I excited? Yeah. Am I tired? Mostly really tired. It's good to be alive. It's good to be I just like all these new sounds, you know, because it's different. And I think that the million people that bought, you know, Awake, mm -hmm. this is, even though they don't know they want it, this is what they want. Right. You know, they want to go the next level. To come out and do something exactly like sounded like the last one, like we were talking about, yeah, that would have been easy. But, you know, right. you got to raise the bar, and that's what you guys are doing. Full systems go. I so, mean, just fantastic. And we're in an amazing place already. Awesome. Rise is basically the story of a typical American teenager and their transition from uh, being kind of a, a, I guess you would say, an adolescent into an adult. It's a story of someone that's dealing with big outward problems, coming to terms with the fact of how ugly the world really is. But at the same time, there's also um, an inward struggle and in those are with, you know, things and her own life. And is basically trying to find herself um, and, and trying to win that battle. Uh, and she finally decides that the world's problems are absolutely so big that there's nothing she can do. But instead of giving up, she at least can change herself. And so it's her struggle to, to matter, her struggle to uh, have an identity. And uh, along the way, she, she is betrayed by other people that she loves, she had her trust in. But the biggest betrayal happens when she finally realizes that, that every day she's betraying herself, that she, she doesn't live up to what she wants to be, and in the end it leads her to, to deciding that there are things in life that she can change, and she realizes that she needs help from that, uh, from without, from, from a higher being, or you know, and have a higher purpose, and so it's about her reaching out to God, it's a, it's a spiritual journey basically, of saying I want my life to be about something, I need someone to save me for myself, that my life could matter, and that's what Rise is all about.